Welcome to Physics Can Be Fun with me, Stephen Thomas. Today we're talking about kinetic energy and how it's passed on during elastic collisions. Do you recognize this piece of apparatus? It's three marbles on a piece of cotton. We give this marble potential energy, let it go, it gets changed into kinetic energy, hits the Let's try it from this side, hits the other marble in the middle, transfers the kinetic energy. Now this is a piece of apparatus called Newton's Cradle. It's possibly one of the better examples of an elastic collision. Here would be another, two golf balls, one stationary, one moving. And the one moving golf ball passes on most of its kinetic energy to the stationary golf ball. Now, in every collision, momentum is conserved, but in not every collision is kinetic energy conserved. So what is kinetic energy? Well, it's the energy that an object possesses by virtue of its movement. And the formula for kinetic energy is symbol EK equals a half mv squared. So the kinetic energy is half the mass times the velocity squared of the object. I thought it'd be fun to work out the kinetic energy of an object. Let's work out the kinetic energy of a falling golf ball. So what we need first is a formula. And the formula is EK equals a half mv squared. The mass of a golf ball is 0.04 five nine kilograms if we could figure out the mass of a golf uh, the velocity of a golf ball that's falling then we could work out its kinetic energy so we have here a velocity meter basically has got a light beam that as the ball crosses it it works out the velocity and we're going to measure the velocity as it falls from a mark here so let's switch on our computer and let's roll the golf ball down zero one point six three nine one point six three nine So that is measured in meters per second. Our light meter has measured it. In fact, what it's done is, is it's measured the velocity exactly in the middle of the two light beams. That's its instantaneous velocity or its average velocity between the two light beams. And it's measured it from that mark to the middle. So calculating the kinetic energy in this equation equals a half times the mass 0 0.0459 times V which is 1 comma 639 squared which is 0.5 times 0 0.0459 times 1.639 squared. And our kinetic energy comes to 0 0.06 joules. It is a scalar quantity so it does not need a direction. Let's use an equation of motion to see if our light meter or our velocity meter is correct. Let's use this equation of motion. Now most people are familiar with the equations of motion, that equation of motion. V final, which is what we measured, is 1.639. Let's see if by plugging in those values we get the same measurement of velocity. So let's use our equation of motion here, which is 
v final square equals v initial square plus 2 times a times delta y. Now, what do all these symbols stand for? Well, v final is our, what we measure, but we're going to calculate as 1.639. So we, v final, we don't know. V initial, it started at the top of this slope at zero. So V initial is zero. So we can exclude it from the equation of motion. So our V final squared is going to be equal to 2 times A. Now A is the acceleration down due to gravity. So A is equal to 9,8 meters per second to the minus 2, and that is down. So that's our acceleration down due to gravity. And delta y, let's move that out of the way. Delta y is this distance, and when I measure the distance from the middle to there, it comes to 0.14 meters, 0.14 meters. So vertical height, delta y, equals 0.14 meters. And there we have our value. So let's plug it into our equation of motion and see if we get the same as 1.63 meters per 639. So it's equal to 2 times 9,8 times delta y, which was 0.14. 2 times 9.8 times 0.14 equals 2.744. 2.744, but that is equal to final velocity squared. So V final must be equal to the square root of that, finding the square root, and it says 1.65, 1.65 meters per second, and that would be down. 1.65. Compare that with 1.639, which is 1.64, 1.65, 1.64. So our calculated using the equations of motion for the final velocity in the middle here worked out almost identical to our measured final velocity when we did the actual measurement. So our equations of motion, which is based on just pure theory, matched and gave us the correct value for our velocity as it cut the light beams. So that proves that theory and practice are complementary, and so our light meter is in fact very accurate.